Welcome to Power Code Music. In this video, we're going to talk about microphones in a way that just about anyone can understand. If you are interested in learning more about microphones, then you've landed in the right place. The most common type of use for microphones in a home studio is for vocal applications. Singers, rappers, DJs, voiceover artists, podcasters, spoken word artists, book readers, and more all rely on the same common tool to capture their sound. These folks, you know, to them the microphone is their axe, just like a guitarist to a guitarist and drums are to a drummer. Professionals whose voice are their instrument should know which microphones sound best for them. <laughs> it's not unusual for a singer, producer, or sound engineer to spend thousands of dollars on a microphone, just as other woods for you know, just as others would for a keyboard or for a guitar. This is a real thing, and it is important for those of you who are not in the know. <laughs> if your voice is your instrument, or if you mic like guitar amplifiers or anything else in your home studio, it is strongly recommended that you have a good basic understanding of microphones. <laughs> With this, let's break down, the, break down the various categories of microphones to see what they were made to do so that we can actually use them appropriately uh, in order to get the best possible results. The bottom line here, is that if you want to up your recording game, understanding microphones can be very important to that. The cool thing here is that it's really not that hard. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's start with what's called a polar pattern, and I'm not talking about Arctic weather systems, okay? All microphones have polar patterns, and polar patterns define how a microphone captures its sound. They do this by listening within a certain spatial range and ignoring sounds outside of that specified area. Understanding polar patterns is the gateway to helping you choose the correct microphone for your sound while minimizing noise levels. Now, let's just for a second talk about multi-pattern microphones and we'll get back to how polar patterns drive microphones in just a moment. Multi-pattern microphones um, are microphones that have features that allow you to switch between various polar patterns. Okay, for instance, the most recent USB microphones include this functionality. It's often a knob with icons around it that represent the different polar patterns. Um, and then you can just turn the knob and choose it and it'll change the polar pattern for that microphone. It's very cool. Other types of microphones, however, um, achieve the same functionality by allowing you to change the head of the microphone. You can take the head of it off and put another one on with a different polar pattern for that device. The impact of this particular feature is that they offer a wider range of placement opportunities uh, within your environment, which makes them far more useful. You don't have to have a bunch of different mics. You can use one for a wider range of applications. Very cool. Now, let's get back to how polar patterns drive different microphone types. We're going to start with a, the type of microphone called an omnidirectional microphone. These microphones pick up sounds from every direction, 360, capturing more of the essence of the overall environment. They can produce sound that's more natural and pleasing, especially in a room where the acoustics are exceptional. These mics are best suited for quiet environments due to their inability to block feedback and noise. Let's move on to cardioid microphones. Now, these types of mics pick up sound directly in front of them and ignore or block sounds from all other areas. Now, this makes them ideal for live performances. 
This is because their design helps them to block feedback and reduce noise along with other environmental sounds that are not wanted. Cardio microphones are the most popular and often used you know, to also capture sounds from guitar amplifiers and drums. The next type of microphone here that drives polar patterns, um, that polar patterns drive, I should say, are hypercardioid and supercardioid microphones. Both these types of mics pick up sounds directly in front of them and ignore or block sounds from all other areas. However, here's the difference. Their field of capture is smaller and much more focused than that of the standard cardioid microphones. Okay, this design offers more feedback resistance and isolation from environmental sound sources. They are great for very noisy environments like stages or non-isolated and loud recording areas. The next mic is a shotgun mic, which is what I'm using right now, right here to record this video. These mics are shaped like a long tube. They capture sound directly from the front while blocking uh, other sounds from the sides and back using what is called phase cancellation. Their long tube design has an impact on their polar pattern that makes them more directional than even the hypercardioid microphones. This also results in a significantly increased range for sound capture. Like mine is, is right here, but it could be even further back, which makes them ideal for applications like stage or movie sets, um, and even recording choirs and singing groups. The next type of microphone is called a figure eight microphone. These microphones pick up sounds directly from the front and from the back, but not from the sides. This feature makes them great for stereo sound capture or for when you want to record more than one sound uh, source at a time. This specific polar pattern is common in large diaphragm condenser microphones and ribbon microphones, those particular two types. Let's move on to an interesting topic, um, which are microphone sizes and why they're different. How come microphones all aren't the same size? Well, let's see why. Microphones capture sounds through what's called a diaphragm. Now, a diaphragm is a thin membrane that moves in reaction to external sound pressure variations. A microphone diaphragm is a key transducer component in converting acoustic energy to electrical energy. There are three types of microphone diaphragms, which all correspond to the microphone size. The mass of the diaphragm has a direct impact on the device's dynamic range, its SPL or sound pressure level, the noise level, and how the microphone behaves in general. Let's look at the three different sizes of microphone diaphragms. The first is a small diaphragm microphone. Okay, This is often referred to as a pencil mic. Now, these cylinder-shaped microphones are more dense and simpler to use. They generally have a wider dynamic range and a good SPL which makes them great for use on acoustic instruments. The next is a medium diaphragm microphone. This is often described as the best of both worlds because these microphones have attributes of both large and small diaphragm mics. They can have a big fat sound like a large diaphragm mic and still retain the highs of a smaller diaphragm microphone. If you already have a large diaphragm microphone, um, you probably won't need one of these. Last but not least is the large diaphragm microphone. 
These are the industry standard in professional recording studios around the world. <laughs> this is because its size, okay, makes it the most sensitive and able to capture the most sonic details. The result is a more natural and realistic sound. This size is ideal for capturing virtually any type of sound. Let's move on to the most common type of microphones. As musicians, there are three common microphones that you should encounter most when working in the studio or on stage. They are the condenser, dynamic, and ribbon microphones. Condenser microphones use capacitance instead of actual moving coils and as a result of this technology, uh, the audio fidelity and sound quality is improved, making these microphones really great for studio recording. However, keep in mind that these types of microphones require power. <laughs> so a device with phantom power, except in cases where the microphone will accept a battery, is generally, or I should just say basically, required. <laughs> in most cases, condenser mics will handle your job very, very well. <laughs> the next are uh, dynamic mics, and these are very flexible tools that you can count on. They're great with loud sound sources and manage them well without the fear of damage or unwanted distortion. They also work great in well-treated areas and isolated environments too. Uh, last but not least is the ribbon microphone. <laughs> Ribbon mics are a throwback to the old days and were very popular in radio back in the day. <laughs> They're great at picking up higher frequen frequencies and notes warmly and smoothly. <laughs> Modern designs of ribbon microphones are more rugged than their predecessors and ribbon microphones really have resurfaced today as the choice of those looking for that vintage sound and feel. <laughs> they also work great in conjunction with other microphones for you, know, for you to capture a more unique and environmental sound. Well, in summary, you might ask yourself, so why are microphones important to a home recording studio based on that type of setup? Well, microphones bring life to your recordings and into your music. They capture the essence of the environment and allow your recordings to breathe and sound more realistic. If you need to break away from a static or dead home studio sound that you're getting in your music, try recording instruments like guitars and or percussion like a snare drum um, and special effects using microphones instead of direct inputs you know, into your recording device. Think about that. Also, have you ever wondered why vocals and drums and guitars on the tracks of some of your favorite songs sound so great? In most cases, this is no accident. Just talking about microphones doesn't do them justice. You must experiment you know, with them yourself to understand that this is a real art form and that it takes time and practice to get it right. The rewards can be great. Well, that's about it. If you like this video, give it the thumbs up and leave a comment in the comments section below and let us know what you think about this video. Click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We'd love to have you be a part of our team. We have new videos coming out every seven to 10 days. And again, we'd love to have you, you know, be a part of our team and join us. Um, also, while you're here at the channel, listen to some of the songs and check out the other videos and let us know what you think about that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.